Today, I'm talking about AR500 armor, and I personally don't think that you should buy AR500 armor. I'm going to explain why, but then I'm also going to talk about if you decide that you absolutely must and you choose that there is no other option that you would like to go with, if you choose that AR500 is the option for you, I'm going to give you a recommendation as far as what in their product line I could actually in good conscience recommend to you. I'm still saying that I don't recommend it. I'm still saying do not buy it. But if you must, I will give that recommendation. Let's talk about that today. So before I get into that, I got to give some quick shout outs to everyone over on Patreon. I want to say thank you to everyone that has supported. But specifically, I'm just going to list off all the people that need specific shout outs. Thickcock45, The Professor, Cademan40, Unversed, Jack, Trip, Boot Von Shorts, Reno Please Use a Dildo as a Mic 6969, Mongoose, who actually we've got some cool stuff coming up we might talk about soon, Glock Fairy, my best friend, Jacob Munoz, Armed Scholar. If you don't know his channel already, please go check it out. He is excellent resource for California gun law and California information in general. Pitar, El Rusty of Rancho Santa Rosa, Controversy, Jay White, Cold Kill 818, Chris Foster, Hentai. <sighs> Matthew Green is fine. Now, I don't know if that's his name that he wanted me to say or if he just wanted me to say that Matthew Green is fine, but right on. Yuri, Freebird69, Megastab, Crazy CS, and Sam Karasi. Thank you to everyone that supported the channel through Patreon. Thank you to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Let's get into this today. So, the reason I'm actually going to be talking about this today is because there's a lot of problems with AR500 armor, um, specifically the company, but steel armor in general also shares these same traits. But I'm going to talk specifically about AR500 body armor today when it comes to their steel armor. So this is all kind of based, a lot of this information is around this post on Reddit from Tactical Gear and Quality Tactical Gear by a guy named Richard Guy, who I believe has a YouTube channel. Um, which I will link below, and it is Yukari's Gear Reviews. So I'm going to be kind of skimming through some of this information, but I'm going to link it down below if you want to read it as well. Not everything in here I agree with fully, but I think a lot of the points really do come across well. Before I tell you actually what my recommendation within their product line is, I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so let's get that out of the way first. This is going to be somewhat of a long video because of how much information we have to cover. There are pros to steel, yes, and there are cons. So today we're going to be talking about that generally. Now, when you talk about AR500, you got to consider that there's both the company and the general term. So the company, AR500 Armor, they go by a new name now, I think technically, but they still refer to themselves and are referred as AR500. But if you're asking what AR500 steel is specifically, what that means is abrasion resistant steel with a hardness level, with a Brennell hardness level of 500. Now, when that's rated, there's a plus or minus to it. Um, this is steel that is desirable in a lot of fields. For example, I worked in a rock quarry for a period of time, and many times the materials of the loaders and the machines and the heavy machinery and just the equipment that we would use was made out of AR500 or AR600 or AR400, depending on the various use case. Now, while this can be used as expedient armor or makeshift armor, when it comes to military applications, it is not the same as what actual armored vehicles are made out of. So that's something that you need to understand. The type of steel is different than the actual military armor that you would find on many vehicles, but it is a very hard steel. Now let's talk about the good. Um, to their credit, they have a very affordable, they have a very accessible and a very durable product. Now let's talk about that. The price, basically, if you want the cheapest possible option to stop bullets, AR500 or other steel companies is the way to go. Is it the best? No, but we'll talk about that in a bit. I believe their Freeman carrier with level three plates uh, is very cheap. I'm not, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but you can get a setup that will stop bullets for much cheaper than you can get anything else. And that's an option that you have. Accessibility, now, Body armor in general, in most states, the only rule is that you cannot sell it to felons and anyone under the age of 18. I think in Connecticut it has to be done face to face, but in California specifically, which is where I'm from and where many of my viewers are from, you could have armor of any manufacturer sent right to your house. However, at the time and still to this day, there are some companies that will only send you body armor if you are military, law enforcement, or have some sort of... Uh, security background. 
Some of them require that you fill out some sort of I'm not a criminal affidavit, but that does nothing. Um, and it's one of those things where that limits the accessibility for some, but AR500, I will give them a whole lot of credit for this. They are very much pro second amendment in the fullest meaning of the words. They do not care as long as you are not a felon or under the age of 18, they will sell you this armor and that's awesome. Now durability, all NIJ certified body armor is rated for drop testing, temperature, extreme heat and cold, extreme humidity, drop testing, multi-hit rated. However, steel armor is less susceptible to the elements and to those things, and it is more likely to take more shots. However, even though it is more likely to be able to last longer through those environmental factors and take more shots, all ceramic, all UHMW, all Kevlar, all whatever body armor that is NIJ certified is rated for multiple hits, contrary to what many FUDs on the internet would tell you about steel. So now let's get into the bad and the ugly. Well, for starters, there is the lack of NIJ certification. If you look at the actual AR500 website, I believe they have two plates that are actually certified with NIJ. It is the level three UHMW um, polyethylene plate and their ceramic plate. To my knowledge, they don't have any soft armor and they don't have any steel armor that is actually rated by the National Institute of Justice or the NIJ to be guaranteed to stop the threats that they are independently tested to. Now, does it mean that the NIJ is the end all be all? No, but when you have a organization that is a third party that will test and make sure that everything is done to standards, making sure that they're doing the proper heat cycling, the submersions, the drop tests, and then the shooting at the proper threat level, that's something that I do like because otherwise you're taking the company's word for it. And I'm not saying, I am not saying at all that AR500 is sketchy or that they are lying to you when it comes to what they say. But when they say that it's tested per NIJ standards, we don't know that it's actually held to the same standard. We don't know that it's held to the same temperature. We don't know that it's dropped the same way. While it could be tested to those standards, it might not actually be to those standards 100%. Does that mean they're bad plates? Not necessarily, but having that certification on it is something that me personally and many others would value. Also, not only have to stop the bullet from penetrating, they have to have the proper amount of minim minimization of back face deformation, meaning that if you were to hit that plate and it caves in or it dents in, if you shoot someone with the threat rated proper round that that plate is rated for, you might be hurt, you might be bruised, it might knock the wind out of you, don't know but it's not gonna kill you from internal injury. And that's what the back face deformation comes into play. Will AR500 that they claim is rated to stop this have the proper amount of back force def deformation? Maybe, but the NIJ doesn't confirm that. And that's one big thing. Like I said before, absolutely none of AR500 steel plates are NIJ certified. They say that they are tested to or independently tested to whatever threat level but they're not actually certified by the NIJ. Their level four ceramic is, and their level three polyethylene plate is NIJ certified, and that's listed very big and proudly. But it's kind of, I think more people need to understand the difference. And that's when we get into the dishonest marketing and wording, um, because like it says, but wait, you say as you browse the web store, it says right here, independently tested and rated to NIJ.0 or NIJ 0101.06 on the listing that doesn't mean that it's actually NIJ certified. In addition to that, you'll see a lot of times YouTubers, um, they'll go out and they'll test body armor, and those are awesome. I watch literally every single one of Mr. Guns and Gears videos where he tests body armor because it's entertainment. It's fun for me to watch. It's a data point to gather, but it's not the same as an actual NIJ testing. When they hang it, against a just box of dirt and it's just sitting there resting or floating freely, that is not the same as doing the proper thermal cycling, the proper environmental condition testing prior, the proper drop tests, and then backing it up to the proper temperature clay that will measure back face deformation. It's really just not the same and I think people need to understand that. Those videos are awesome. And to some people, uh, it adds a level of security knowing that, hey, this person was able to grab one off the rack and it stopped that threat. 
Well, that's cool. I really love those videos. I'm still gonna watch every single one of Mr. Guns and Gears body armor tests because I like watching them. They're fun, they're entertaining to me, but they're not the same as an NIJ testing. And I think many people need to understand that. So in addition to that, for me, in my mind, if the hard armor rifle plates cannot stop full threat 5.56 five, and 2.23 rounds, it's not hard body armor in my opinion. I think that if you're going to call something, if you're going to think of something as rifle armor, it needs to be able to stop M193 at 3200 feet per second. Because if someone's rocking an A2, like we saw the McCloskeys, they got an A2 loaded with M193, that's a 20 inch barrel that's moving at around 32 to 3300 feet per second. Those, those bullets are coming to vibe check your level three and your level three plus AR500 plates. So for me, if it can't stop those threats, it's not hard armor. It's not rifle armor in my mind, in my opinion. Many people aren't worried about those threats and they're just worried about, you know, some fuddy rounds like 30-06, 308. Um, they're worried about some of the lower velocity if they're running against an SBR kind of threat. But for me, I want to know that some homeboy with an A2 and a carry handle isn't gonna be able to just punch through my plates like butter. That's why I use level four and I recommend at minimum level three plus if you're looking to stop rifle threats. The problem is, is that level three plus isn't an actual armor rating. It is a sort of it is a uh, it is a rating that has no actual standard. The NIJ currently does not value and level three plus as an actual standard. That's going to be changing in the future to have a rifle threat rating and range that uh, should encompass all your typical five five six and two two three loads in with the what's typically level three. I think they're going to change the name nomenclature. If that happens in the future, we will have that discussion. But when you look at AR-500, it doesn't list 55 grain ammunition as something that their basic level three armor protects. They only show that it shoot, that it will stop 62 grain at 2600. And they say on their website, looking for protection against high velocity threats such as M193, look to our level three plus body armor, which is special threat, special threat tested to M193 velocities at 3100 feet per second. The problem is, if you want to go with a light option, lightweight option relatively for level three plus, you basically have to use the super narrow cut and diagonal shaped plates that they have, which basically gives you a very small area of protection. I'm already using minimal protection. This is a lot of, I know a lot of people will comment on my videos and say, hey, it looks like you're not really covering what you want to, but my lungs are not right here. This is, I just have wide shoulders. I have wide shoulders. I got big old dude pecs or whatever it is. And that's just how my body is built. If I were to start cutting at a super hard angle here, it would start exposing lung tissue in ways that I don't want it to. And that's why I don't recommend their lightweight plates. So their traditional cut plates will only stop up to 3000 to 3100 feet per second, <laughs> which is very easily reachable by 16 inch barrels. So a 16 to 18 to a 20 basically guarantees that you're not going to be able to reliably stop M193, aka the most popular rifle round in America right now. So spalling and bouncing projectiles. This is a topic that gets brought up basically anytime anyone talks about AR500 or steel plates in general. Well, steel unlike most body armor types, doesn't catch the rounds. Kevlar, UHMW, ceramics, they catch. They absorb the energy. They slow down the bullets. And that's how they actually stop projectiles. Steel, on the other hand, acts as a basically just a shatterproof surface, a surface that if the bullet hits it, it explodes. Inherently, because of the way it stops bullets, is going to create an explosion of metal, of lead and copper, sideways, up and down. Now, I don't want shrapnel in my crotch, I don't want shrapnel in my jugular, I don't want shrapnel in my arms. So the way around this, how do they solve that problem? Well, AR-500 has what they call PaxCon, which is basically a bed liner type material. They're going to argue that it's nowhere similar, it's not similar at all. but. It's basically the same thing, functionally. Now, they sell a base coat option as pretty much one of their only options now. On some of them, I believe they used to, or at one point they did sell it with just bare 
But the current options that I would choose have the option for the base layer, which has been shown to be very ineffective. And then they offer the option of upgrading to the buildup coat at a significant charge which, with extra money. The problem with this, if it's so useful and it's so necessary to trap the spalling, why would you ever offer the option to not use it? To me, it's scummy of them to give an option that does not capture the spall adequately. And yes, I fully agree that not having a hole in your chest is a lot better and is a decent trade-off. If you said I only had two options in my life, if I could have a hole shot through my chest or I could have shrapnel spall all around my body, uh, yeah, I would choose the shrapnel spall as opposed to having a sucking chest wound or hitting my nervous system, obviously. But it's not good. You don't want spall. You don't want bullets to ricochet off. You don't want them to hit at an angle and then hit you in the arm. That defeats the purpose of wearing body armor if it causes you then to get hit. There's plenty of pictures out there showing that it does fail. In their own advertising material, obviously if you watch an AR-500 ad, they're not going to set the test up in a way that's going to fail. You don't know whether or not it's truly effective in the way that it's going to hit the end user. And I'm not accusing them of lying. I'm just saying that you cannot trust a lack of information as your source. When you watch those fancy marketing videos, and that's really what they are, it's not the same as actual testing. And that's the problem because there are plenty of videos and photos and images online of people showing that their base coat failed during normal shooting. They're just shooting at that plate, they hit it a couple times, and if it blows off that chunk of spall protection right there, if you take another shot nearby, it's basically like shooting bare armor. I've seen photos of them shooting a steel plate just a couple times and the entire spall protection just coming straight off. It's like they pulled the sh and they've pulled the foil off a of yogurt. Like it's not reliable, and personally, that's why I don't rec recommend it. Now let's talk about weight. AR-500 armor is very, very heavy, especially in the level three plus format, which, like I said before, in my mind, is the only option for rifle armor. Now it's only a quarter of an inch thick, but for a 10 by 12 plate, it's around nine pounds per plate. <laughs> in their new and advanced advanced shooter cut. So basically what it does is you choose if you're right-handed or left-handed and it cuts off more on that side so that you can more easily get a stock here. So that shaves off physical material of protection, which that's fine if that's a better cut, that's the trade-off you take, but that's in their advanced shooters cut that it's nine pounds per plate. And that should be mentioned that that's for a bare plate. AR5 do do doesn't mention how much the extra or the buildup coat actually costs. So if you're running at about eight and a half pounds per plate, I think it is, plus the best estimates that we have from other similar companies that offer a similar product, say about a pound per plate. So let's say it's 10 pounds. We're going to say that it's about 10 pounds per plate with the buildup coat, because that's the only option you should ever consider even going with. So you got 10 pounds per plate about three pounds for their plate carrier, which is not super inexpensive considering other options on the market. But if you go with their plate carrier as well, which usually offers a better price if you do one of their bundles, you're looking at 23 pounds before you add mags. Now, each magazine, a PMAG with 30 rounds in it is gonna run you about one pound on average. So for me, I'm wearing a ceramic plate, two of them in a slick carrier with three mags on it my setup weighs less than 18 pounds with three mags versus 23 pounds with no mags. I don't know. That's a pretty considerable amount of weight to be shaving off. And yeah, you could go with their three plus lightweight option at six and a half pounds each with the coating, but the coverage is pretty lackluster in my mind. Um, and you're still down to only 3000 FPS for 5.56. 3000 FPS is very reachable by 14 or 16 inch barrels. And that's in my mind out the question. So the option is then, well, why don't they have a steel plate that's level four? Well, if you were to do that, the plate would be about 30 pounds each, 30 pounds each. If you wanted something that could stop 30-06 MP or armor piercing rounds. So for me, yeah, it's just a no go when it comes to weight. 
Now, steel armor, it used to be a lot cheaper, or it used to be the best cheap option, but for me, when I go to AR500, if there was an option that I would go with, the plates aren't nearly as cheap as the super bare minimum cost options that you can get. So when there's ceramic plates that cost anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks and way less, and are level four, uh, well, for me, that's starting to sound better in basically every possible way. So I have a hard time even recommending them on the cheap side, because if you're going cheap, you can still get inexpensive NIJ certified level fours that cost similarly with a little bit more money and are coming, <laughs> coming in at a lower weight. Like, no brainer for me. Now let's talk about trauma pads. So for about 35 bucks extra for a 10 by 12 pad, you can put a piece of padded material that goes behind the armor and it's basically marketed as it reduces the pain that one would feel from being shot and it also adds the benefit of actually being more comfortable. If you have something that's hard, especially if it's not multi-curve, you're gonna have a lot of issues with things digging in and having those trauma pads, I've heard people say, does add a level of comfort. But for me, if I was gonna be running steel, that would be almost mandatory for me to run them. So you're looking at another 35 bucks, that's 70 bucks extra for the trauma pads, adding about, I think, 0.6 pounds each. So, or I think when I did the math on the trauma pads, it's about, for two of them, it's about 0.7 pounds. So uh, for me, would I go with it? Uh, still probably not, but that's one of the options. So if I were to buy AR500 armor, now that we've talked about the goods and we've talked about all of the very extensive negative sides of it, let's talk about what I would actually buy. So if we look here, I'm gonna go to there, just show you how to get here. So Armored Republic AR500 armor, just ar500armor.com. We're gonna go here to level three plus. If we then scroll down, we see that they have several options, 11 by 14, 10 by 12 side plates. So we're gonna go to 10 by 12 because for most people, that's what you need. Me, realistically, I might be able to get away with like an 11 by 13, but 11 by 14 is just a little bit too long for me. So if we go to the 11 by 12 or 10 by 12 level three plus advanced shooters cut, you see that the cut here has a sharper angle on the side that you would shoot on, giving you a better mobility. So multi-curve, I would always go multi-curve. With a flat piece of steel, it's gonna be very uncomfortable. So I wouldn't even consider it an option, but if price is absolutely of the essence, the only option, and you legitimately think that you cannot save that money over a period of time and get to a point where you could afford better, a flat option is an option for you. I don't recommend it whatsoever. Coating, they give you the option of base coat only, but like I said, it's basically mandatory to have the buildup coat. Yes, having shrapnel all over your body and neck and jugular and arms and crotch is better than having a hole in your central nervous system, but buildup coat is the option that you wanna go with. So that bumps it up to $173, $173 for the multi-curve level three plus. Now I'm right-handed. I'm gonna add two. Now you notice here, estimated lead time, 14 to 16 weeks. Well, that's a problem, but we'll just throw that in there. So in 14 to 16 weeks, think about how much money you could save up to afford something better, but that's besides the point for right now. If you go here, AR500 Blunt Force Trauma Pad, like I said, I'm gonna recommend that you get two of these. So boom, we're at our cart, we got two pads, and we got two plates. This puts us at a total of $416. Now. When you think about the fact that ceramics don't necessarily need to have this, that's something that really is important. It saves $70. In my mind, that's a mandatory option if you want to have the best possible experience with steel. I still don't think that you should do this because I think if you just look here, look, $416. This is no longer just the cheap level three Freeman carriers that they advertise and that seemed very enticing because for me, this is the only option I could even possibly recommend and I still don't recommend it. If you want to buy this, I'm going to have a link down to their website below. It is an affiliate link. You can feel free to use it or not. If you're going to use it, it gets me money. If you don't want to use my link because I've been trash talking AR500 this whole time, that's very fair. I'm not saying that this is not an option that will stop bullets. I am just saying that there are so many better options without all the negatives of steel and that don't even cost $416. So. Here is T-Rex Arms' website. They sell HESCO L210 Special Threat Plates. They're basically rated for AKs, 
handguns, ARs of any type. They cost four point or five point or they weigh five point four pounds. They're single curve, multi hit, standalone plates. A plate set from T Rex Arms when they're in stock is three hundred and seventy dollars. This is not the best price that you can find online. However, about every week, these come in stock, meaning that every week they will be shipped out in one to 10 business days. Every single time that I've ordered from them, they've shipped within two business days, which is kind of crazy, right? So this is an option I would actually recommend that gives you a lot of threat stoppage. So all in all, I want to reiterate, I don't recommend AR-500 armor but it is an option. If you must go with it, I have one recommendation that I can make. I am eagerly awaiting the fact that I know that Tyler from AR500 Armor and all of the marketing people are going to leave very long comments discussing the benefits of steel, and that's fine. Personally, I value the things that ceramics and polyethylene plates offer significantly more. If you have any discussion that you would like to have, drop those comments down below. I hope to hear from you. This is a topic that's going to get a lot of hate, and I'm aware of that. But personally, in my mind, when it comes to a potentially life-saving piece of equipment, because if you think that you absolutely need this now and you need the cheapest possible option, there are significantly better options out there. These are not going to get to you within 14 to 16 weeks. Personally, I could not recommend AR-500, but it is an option that is available should you choose to go with it. You guys know the drill, though. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous. Peace. Uh, actually, before we go, if you guys have any questions about my setup, I'm currently running Hoplite plates, which by the way, I think the plates made by LTC are great. They're good bang for the buck ceramics. Uh, the company, I don't really like, um, but if you're interested in a review on what I think about these plates, what I think about the company, uh, let me know down below. But yeah, you guys know the drill. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous. Peace. Blah, 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 blah.